And here, um, and he shall not receive absolution until he first deliver up the Bible. You can't read the Bible pursuant to the Council of Trent. Without the Bible, we have no Western civilization. We have no Constitution. Yes. This was taken from, uh, in 1820 to 29 from a fantastic book called The Jesuit Conspiracy written by Abate Le Leon. It's on my disc in the book. You can read the entire book. Dear brethren, the six assistants of the Jesuit general, our weapons are of quite different temper from those of the seizures of all ages, and it will not be difficult for us to maneuver as to render ourselves masters of all the powers already so much weakened. We fear no lack of soldiers, only let us apply ourselves to recruiting them from all ranks, from all nations, drilling them into punctual service. But let us, by the same time, be vigilant that no one may suspect our designs. You well know that what we aim is at the empire of the world. Written in 1848, published all throughout Europe, and was one of the impetuses that caused the Second French Revolution in 1848. Our Father General, as you know, governs Rome itself and the Popedom. We make war at our pleasure betwixt one prince and another, between a prince and his subjects, usurp dominion over cities and countries, fearing no discovery of our actions. Since our commerce is chiefly with great men, we know every public secret and can in a singular way dispatch, kill, heretics and enemies of the Roman court. F. Doza. Aye, give me gold, plenty of gold, and then with such able heads and such resources as the church commands, I will undertake not only to master the whole world, but to reconstruct it in entirely. Remember the Reconstruction? The American Reconstruction? Now we're having a Reconstruction amongst the Islamic nations. Next. Successful in her assaults upon this country, she may put the world back again into the darkness of the Middle Ages. This, our country, has been used as the greatest tool of the papacy to create the new world order. When the United States rules the world, the Catholic Church will rule the world. The Vatican has ruled our country, lock, stock, and barrel, at least since the days of Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders, until they put that Freemason in office after they assassinated McKinley. Every war we've been in since, since the Spanish-American War has been a Vatican War. Everyone. We all think we're patriots. I'm going overseas to Germany. My buddies are going to Nam. All for the Pope. Early in January, uh, communism is an enemy. We are all against it. But we have another enemy also, older, shrewd, too also older, shrewder. It is Roman Catholicism and its bid for world power. In the United States, it is Spellmanism. Cardinal Francis Spellman was the most powerful churchman up to his day that ever lived in the United States. Spellman was FDR's intelligent liaison overseas. He carried all his intelligence messages. He worked intimately with the OSS and Wild Bill Donovan, and Wild Bill Donovan was Irish Roman Catholic, you guessed it, Knight of Malta. St. Bartholomew's Massacre in 1572. This is when the Jesuits organized the attempt at annihilation of all the French Huguenots or the French Protestants, first out of Paris and then out of, ultimately out of France with the revocation of the Edict of Nantes in 1685. Next. Henry Garnett, the Jesuit who was one behind the gunpowder plot with 36 barrels of gunpowder in, uh, in England. He tried to, they tried to blow up the king and the parliament. It was discovered. Um, Guy Fawkes was put to death, and this was the Jesuit behind it, and here's what he said. O oh God, destroy this perfidious nation. Extirpate from the earth those who live in it, to the end that we may joyfully enter into Jesus Christ, the Pope, because he claims to be Jesus Christ, the praises that are due unto him. This is the kind of fanaticism that a Jesuit of the fourth vow has. The death of Gustavus Adolphus at Lutzen, 1594 to 1632. He was known as the Snow King and the great Lutheran hero. And here's what he said as he died. Here he is dying, giving his last full measure for Protestant liberty, declaring to his killers, I am the king of Sweden, and thus I seal with my blood the religion and liberties of Germany. Our hero's modest life and noble death furthered the reformation that brought about the modern era with the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648. Any historian will tell you that the modern era began in 1648. The dark ages, ages ended and the modern era began then. That's when science flourishes and we begin to build civilization. Japan, this is the most horrible story. The Jesuits came into Japan, they sought to conquer Japan. After conquering Japan, they sought to conquer China. 
Well, the Japanese got wise to them. They, they suppressed them and expelled them in 1614. In 1622, they hung many Jesuit traitors, and righteously so. Here's Matthew Rickey conquering China for the Pope in 1605 with IHS. They did not succeed. Next. We're going to jump 200 years in the future. We're going to look at these two men here. This is Albert Fall, and this is Knight of Malta, Edward de Haney. Albert Fall was the Secretary of Interior. He made a secret deal with de Haney because de Haney was an oil man, and he would, de, Edward de Haney was far richer than John D. Rockefeller. When was the last time we ever heard of Edward de Haney? Okay? This evil and calculating man bribed his old friend Albert Fall into leasing Navy oil land in Elk Hills, California, which oil netted him $100 million in gold. <clears throat> Dehaney then built Navy fuel storage tanks at Pearl Harbor in the name of national security. This is in the 20s, folks. When did the Japanese attack? 41. They're planning in the 20s for a Japanese attack. Okay? Um, <clears throat> And, and Dehaney talks about this Mongol invasion. <laughs> Fall was convicted of taking a bribe from Dehaney, but after four court battles, Papal Knight Edward Dehaney was found innocent of giving the very same sinister bribe that Fall had been sent to prison for receiving. <laughs> that shows how they control the courts. Now the Company of Jesus could incite a Japanese attack using FDR and Hirohito to wage war against the anti-Jesuit Japanese people. Hirohito and FDR worked together. I had an old missionary Japanese friend, Daniel Fuji. He said we couldn't stand here. Oh, he, did, they lie, he lied to us. Here's a Japanese trader. This is an admiral of the Japanese fleet that attacked Pearl Harbor. Having been ex exhorted by the orders of Emperor Hirohito and Admiral Isoro Yamamoto, educated at Harvard, that the fate of the Japanese empire will depend on this issue of this battle, this shameless traitor refused to order a third airborne attack wave at Pearl Harbor, sparing essential targets including ship repair and fuel storage facilities. The harbor's above-ground fuel tanks built by Knight of Malta Edward de Haney in preparation for the Pacific War were filled to capacity with 4.5 million barrels of oil and remained untouched. According to Admiral Husband E. Kimmel, if the oil tanks had been destroyed, the Pacific fleet would have been forced to wage a 4,000-mile war from the distant California coast as there was no fuel available anywhere else in the Pacific. The Battle of Midway would never have taken place during which the Japan lost half of its fleet. Since the purpose of the Black Post attack on Pearl Harbor was merely to incite 14th Amendment America to declare war on Japan, Nagumo's attack was never intended by the Japanese high command under Jesuit control to destroy the base. As a result, the fate of the Japanese Empire was sealed. Japanese treason, American treason, Dwight Eisenhower being the most disgusting American general traitor who probably ever drew a breath. <clears throat> Irish massacre, 1642, is when the Jesuits motivated the Irish to kill their own people. Next. My Jesuit, ex-Jesuit advisor taught me this one, and I was shocked to hear it, and he wrote it himself. During this, uh, this is the second Irish massacre from 1845 to 1850. We're all taught it's the Irish potato famine, aren't we? What nonsense. During this five-year period that Queen Vic with Queen Victoria sitting on the British throne, Jesuit controlled, the whole house of Hanover was Jesuit controlled, says George III, the royal butcheress of Ireland, who managed to raise her infamous son, Jack the Ripper, Closely attended by her Jesuit advisors, advisors, freighters laden with Irish meats, vegetables, etc., were departing Irish ports en route to other countries at the rate of about seven freighters per day. The Jesuits in control of Victoria were starving Ireland. In the night, <clears throat> while nearly one million of my Irish ancestors were starving to death, in the 1930s, the company would cause Stalin's massacre of the Orthodox Ukrainians and the so-called famine in the Ukraine, ordering Stalin to lock up all the food as millions perished. In addition to producing another Vatican harvest, the Irish Protestant body count, the ensuing increased Irish immigration provided the Jesuits with a stepped-up flow of Irish Catholics to the United States to help build within that Protestant nation a blindly obedient papal fifth column as an instrument for destroying American constitutional self-government. It worked. 
In the 1960s, the Jesuits would cause the forced mass immigration of North Vietnamese Catholics to South Vietnam by using Ho Chi Minh, who had a Catholic advisor as a bishop, a bishop advisor, to spread the rumor that his communists were going to kill all the Catholics in North Vietnam. The U.S. Navy, controlled by Cardinal Spellman's Francis Matthews, who was the head of the Knights of Columbus at the time, provided the vessels for that movement. Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell that overcame the machinations of the Jesuit order and saved Protestant England. 